Hey, what's up everyone? Trent here. I've made 60,000 outbound cold calls. This is more real world cold calling experience than anyone else I'm aware of on the internet. So I'm basically the most qualified person in the entire world to explain to you how to set a meeting on a cold call. My script works for all industries because I've successfully used this talk track to sell software and now medical supply products into the healthcare industry on behalf of my family small business that I'm leading sales for. The objective of any B2B cold call is to coordinate a scheduled meeting with your prospect at a mutually agreed upon time so that they're actually expecting your call. And there's three steps you gotta follow in order to successfully do this. Number one, give them a clear reason why you are calling them and what you want. Number two, lead with value. We're here to help you make money, save money, mitigate risk. And number three, you gotta make the ask for their time. If you don't ask, you will never receive. My hope is that by the end of this video, you are able to instantly start setting more meetings on the phone so that you can increase your commission checks and find more success in your career sooner rather than later. If you're on board with those outcomes, hit the thumbs up button now and let's get directly into it. So the first step you gotta follow in order to set a meeting on the cold call is to give them the reason why you are calling. Imagine an executive wearing a suit up top and then underwear down below. So they're serious, but they're not serious. They're working from home. They're sitting there on their laptop. They have 89 unopened emails. They're watching my TikTok videos for some reason because I show up on everyone's For You page and they have to deliver a presentation to their boss later in this afternoon, someone on their team just quit. Oh, and as a matter of fact, it's their daughter's choir concert at 4 p.m. So they're a little bit flustered, a little bit stressed, and then all of a sudden, they hit their focus block when, when they turn off notifications, but somehow their phone starts ringing, and it's you on the other end, and you are there to disrupt their day. The last thing in the world they wanna do is hear from you because you're a distraction. Cold calling is a contact sport. You are interrupting people's days, calling them out of the blue. So you gotta give them something to nail the first five seconds so that you can eventually get into your value prop, which is I'm gonna explain to you what I say. But once you get them on the phone, you say, hey Trent, this is Trent from D&D Wholesale. How are you? Good. Hey, the reason I was giving you a call, Trent, is I noticed that you were the VP of sales at D&D Wholesale, and we help groups just like yours to generate more pipeline and increase win rates. Either of those a priority for you or your team this year? Pause. You see what we just did there? We gave them a reason why we are calling them. We gave them a reason how we can actually help them and we're hoping to validate what we're about to say next in that opening statement. You gotta ask them a seemingly obvious question that you already know the answer to that validates what you're about to say is gonna be important to them and get them to say yes. Because psychologically, once you can get them to say yes once early in the call, your chances of them then complying with your ask for their time later in the call it, for a meeting is gonna be much more successful. So at that point, you've given them the reason why you're calling them, their guards down a little bit, and you've now earned the opportunity to go into step number two to successfully setting a meeting, and this is leading with value. This is where a lot of people get in their own way because they're overly reliant on a cold call script, they sound robotic, and it's like a, a full minute. They're about to go on this entire speech they say elevator speech because if you're on floor number two and you get in the elevator, you got until floor number one, you got about 10, 15 seconds to give a compelling enough reason for that person to then comply with whatever you want them to do, which is to agree to a meeting with you so that you can then begin your sales cycle, right? So anytime I lead with value, I'm very cognizant of what do they care about? Are you calling human resources? Do they care about attracting talent, retaining talent, engaging talent? Are you calling IT? You wanna make sure cybersecurity is good. People are using the technologies. They're getting the best deals for the technologies. Are you calling into marketing? Do they care about running advertisements? Do they care about pipeline? Do they care about advertising spend? Think about what they care about in terms of business outcomes. You're not calling selling features. That's what everyone else is doing. You're not calling and saying, we're the number one ranked company in our space. We have the best AI. We, we are ranked number one on G2. Hey, we work with Coca-Cola, Pepsi, and Amazon. Therefore, you should work with us. 
They don't care about this. They want you to talk in terms of their language, which means you must intimately understand your buyer persona. So when you go into your value prop, after you validated, hey, you're the director of sales, you care about generating more pipeline and increasing win rates. Yes, I do. I would say, okay, well, we work with companies just like yours to help them to better analyze their deals with our automated voice recording, gong software, whatever, so that they can increase win rates by da 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 da. What would that mean for you in your business? Or how are you doing this today? So you can begin to ask them questions if you wanna do a bit more discovery or qualification, but what I would recommend after you've given them enough value to chew on is get into step number three as soon as you can early in the call, which is the call to action. This is making the ask for their time. What I say every time, and it works, is you say, hey, being that this is important for you today, increasing pipeline, whatever, whatever outcome you said in the beginning, being that this is important for you today, I'd like to set up an introductory call with you so that we can discuss your top priorities, allow me to introduce specifically how we can help, and if we agree there's alignment, we can continue the conversation. If not, we can part ways. How does that sound? That's the exact script I use because what we've done is we've inserted our ask, which is to set up another meeting, and we've given them an out. We've reduced the friction because it's hard to make an ask that seems like there's something connected to it, like you have hidden motives. You've just stated your motives. Hey, we're gonna get on this call and I'm gonna share with you the recent industry trends report. Hey, I wanna share with you what we are seeing from peers in your space. And the way to combat any potential objection at this point is you lead from a stance of partnership. I know you're not looking to change today. Hey, I know you don't have any budget today. Hey, I know you're already under contract today, but there will come a time when you are back in the market. Better yet, I would like to share with you new ideas for you to consider that you can put into your program today. No strings attached. We're just looking to be your partner. We're committed to long-term value, and we believe it would be mutually beneficial for us to schedule a brief introductory conversation so we can get to know you better, introduce how we can help, and there may come a time in the future when we can work together. Would you be opposed to that? You're leading with value, you're leading with partnership. And when I first started cold calling, I was having a tough time setting meetings, and when I went back and listened to all of my call recordings, the one thing I was missing was actually making the ask for their time. So if you mess up step number one, you don't give them a reason. If you mess up step number two, and you do not give them a compelling enough value prop and reason for them to want to take the call, you can still save the day in step number three and simply say, look, I get the sense that I really missed the marker on this call here today. My intention is to coordinate an additional meeting in which we can discuss what you care about and we can talk about specifically how we can help. What do you say? <laughs> you can salvage any call because all you gotta do is ask them for the meeting. The objective of any B2B cold call is to coordinate another meeting at a mutually agreed upon time so that you can then begin your sales cycle. On that initial meeting, you will then do qualification, discovery, whatever it is you gotta do to then decide, is this a qualified opportunity? This is a real deal, I'm gonna put my pipeline, and hopefully, eventually, it turns into revenue because then I'm gonna get a big fat commission check and I'm gonna be able to go on vacation, I'm gonna be able to buy the engagement ring, I'm gonna be able to buy the house, I'm gonna be able to retire, I'm gonna be able to post on LinkedIn and flex about how many deals I close, whatever it is you wanna do. That is how to set more meetings with a cold call. I read and respond to every single one of your comments, so I'd love to hear from you down below what your single biggest takeaway was from this video and perhaps any additional money making cold calling lines that you use that are verified to work because I share with you guys the exact script that I use no matter who I'm calling, no matter what time of the day, no matter what day of the week it is, no matter what I'm selling, what I just shared with you here today guaranteed will work for you. If we're not connected on LinkedIn already, connect with me now and I'll talk to you in the next video.